Rage is back on the menu, boys. Fists up, forks into skin. Welcome to Aaron Undoes Music, where today we're taking a look at the fourth EP from American hardcore band Knock Loose called A Tear in the Fabric of Life. Guess who just realized their fan was on during the recording of the beginning? Me! Arguably regarded as the current kings of the hardcore scene in metal, and by others the feverish princes looking to establish the same throne. No matter where you stand, there is no question that these Kentucky-born punks know how to turn a venue upside down and know how to command a pit. While the band might have gotten insane praise and notoriety from their album Laugh Tracks, their most recent and arguably equally successful album, A Different Shade of Blue, came out just a couple years ago. There's more of a broader edge to the band's sawblade this time around. Instead of focusing on pure 24-7 hardcore work, they decided to bridge some different forms of metal into things, but overall it was still a hard, heavy, great piece of work. There's one thing missing though. One thing that just didn't quite click 100% on the different shade of blue, and that was the sheer nails on a chalkboard piercing fierce anger that they had on laugh tracks pop culture, their split EP with damaged goods and so on. People wanted it faster, they wanted it harder, they wanted all the sex illusions that Knock Loose came packed with. And after some time waiting in the shadows, producing their next effort, the fruits of Knock Loose's labor have been laid out in front of us with this magnificent EP. While I cannot state enough that the band has never been soft, never anything close to soft, there was a certain hardened ferocity that came with the earlier albums from them that I just mentioned. Fans were waiting for Brian Garris to come back with the sheer, demonic, Beelzebub-like fer ferociousness that he had before. He showed plenty of glimpses of it on A Different Shade of Blue, and Laugh Tracks was pretty much par for the course, standard for Knocked Loose. But with Different Shade of Blue, people got that, they got that brand of heaviness, and they said, oh yeah, I love this, I'll take a refill of this, but if you could put a little more alcohol, a little more pop culture era, that'd be sick. And I'm able to tell you about every different feeling that relates to that, because this is a quick album, an EP at that, so I can go track by track here and tell you how Knock Loose, they never really lost themselves, they never really had to refine themselves, but they looked in the mirror, shattered that shit, slit their own throat with a glass, and said, here we are again, reborn, rebirthed, back and bloody. The first song, Light Divides the Holler, greets you with radio chatter, something a little different, something more cinematic, which this whole release relates to, a cinematic overtone. And you're sat there wondering what's gonna happen. What's going to be the breaking point? What's going to bring you full into the storm? And that's when it hits you. You are driven full force into a chilling scream that gets your attention fully on Brian Garrin. Garris, Brian Garris, I apologize. I My eyes aren't working too well and try to read this script. With a hardcore band, you can generally look at the vocalist as the leader of the pack charging into battle head first. But Brian Garris takes being a band in general to a whole another level with his presence both in studio and on the stage. That's not to say Isaac and Nico aren't doing the same thing. Absolutely taking names, taking bodies, dropping bodies with their guitar work. It's whirlpool intensity from these two as well. First song has a truly heart-stopping breakdown, complete with all the proper pieces, and anticipation building build up, culminating in a two-part climax, which is the best kind of climax. You get two parts, you get two levels of satisfaction, and they're both way up on high on the chart. The way that this breakdown evolves and changes smoothly into the outro of the song really speaks volumes about the band's production work as well. There are very few bands that can take this harder, roughest edge of metal subgenres and make it come off as smooth. But that's just what Knock Loose does here. Hell, a lot of bands give hardcore, uh, excuse me, a lot of people give hardcore bands shit because all they think it is is, well, oh, it's just noise for the sake of noise, more so than metal already is. They're just doing it to be the loudest people in the room. But Knock Loose not only is the loudest group of people in the room, but they show that they can make that noise have cohesiveness. And it's not just anger and adrenaline throughout this whole album. You get looks into guilt and despair as well. Alternative Press said it best by summarizing this story as one of a spiral through depression and guilt over the loss of a loved one. And while that theme isn't the most unique thing in the world, in fact, I just covered two Metallica albums that deal with a lot of depression and guilt there, Knock Loose makes the extra effort and goes the extra mile in creating a story that takes itself firmly within the roots of their hardcore music, but having enough of a cinematic and story-driven overtone that makes it just blend in a way that not a lot of bands can do. A lot of bands focus too much on the story, focus too much on the concept, and sacrifice the quality of the music, or it's the other way around. The music's quality, but the story is basically nothing more than title tracks and songs' names. That's just the starting point. 
that whole overarching idea. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond the face value, the whole, this is my fault and I have to live with the thing. Brian Garris was quoted as saying the following, very kind of loosely quoted. This was the first real attempt to evoke a wider range of emotion, and I felt several emotions myself while listening to this and analyzing the lyrics as well. I could sense the despondent energy seeping out of every single track like this horrifically black, thick ooze. It overtakes you, just like the weight of those emotions I discussed just so previously can consume you just as well. You drown in this music as much as the music is becoming a part with you. It got to a point where my mind almost started feeling a sense of like sadness by proxy, sadness by association. Usually I can listen to music that is just brutally depressing, like bordering on suicide notes and music, like from some bands and artists. But I never really sensed that sheer relative feeling of, oh God, I feel shitty listening to this. That's what Knock Loose is doing here. And it's not a negative thing. It's evoking an emotion. The emotion itself is negative, and it's not something to take with you all sing all day. While you're listening to this song, if you can melt into that same emotion that the vocalist and the band is giving you, that means that the that band is doing something tremendous in its work. Speaking of transitions earlier, before I went on that whole little mini miniature rant, miniature descriptive paragraph there, I talked about some transitions for a little bit. We're gonna talk about how this next song on the EP, God Knows, completely switches and transitions from not just the classic knock loose, a pure punching your face until it's bloody and bruised, to the meditated, pure, focused work that you got with the drum work in Dead Ringer, Counting Worms. The drummer finds his fucking voice and finds his platform, lets things flow right here. This song really brings out the small moments, the little tension in the strings, the tension in everything, but especially the strings outside of the drum work that they put into this album. The tension goes back and forth. There's genuine squeals halfway through the song. This is five guys doing what they love and making what can be a career out of it if it's not already a career, because we know music does not pay. There wasn't one song in this EP where I wasn't able to find one or two little details, but God knows is rich with details. Little moments that you go back and it's like, that was a great addition. Little moments that you go back and you said, if it wasn't for that part, the song wouldn't be as strong. There's so many little bits and bobs that knock loose every single member, the guitarist, the bassist, the drummer, Brian, the vocalist, they have all done something to make each song stand out and their part within the songs stand out. Even in the song's final track, Permanent, the fine detail is you go from the shortest song on the album to the longest, most spread out, most story driven song yet. You get this drawn out anticipation building ending and the song makes you brace for one last final come down and while the last few raspy screams or even just breaths and quick lyrical moments would have been great we get a nice quiet fade into nothingness leaving you with the play button to visit this work once more there's a companion film that goes along with the a tear in the fabric of life but even without that the audio elements lead itself to a very comprehensive and very well done cinematic piece. Knock Loose knows they're a big deal. Knock Loose knows they're one of the bigger names in the scene and the subgenres which they lie in. But they not only have the street cred to back that up, but the talent as well. They never leave their talent back in the garage where they were practicing. They keep that shit on them 24 seven. In the last three tracks, there's a lot of blank and you'll miss it moments, just like in the very compact track, Return to Passion, which this song also serves as the come forth, come one, come all, get your shit absolutely rocked by some six foot four guy with combat boots in the pit for some reason song. And God, do I love that kind of thing. A lot of people say they don't want bands to do this kind of thing where it's just a quick in your face momentum. They just want something mediated, longer, structured. But Noctilus doesn't want that. Noctilus wants to give you the shit hard, fast, and heavy. While you can enjoy the album without the companion piece, the cinematic masterpiece that is A Tear in the Fabric of Life, I highly recommend it as well. A band that can make an album like Noctilus that coincides with its cinematic material while also being able to stand without it, I've said it, I've been praising them nonstop in this whole review. It's brilliant, it really is brilliant. Eight years is a disputable number for a long tenure for a band. For some bands, it's short. For some bands, it's long as hell. But it feels like just yesterday, it was eight years ago, we heard a track off that split EP with Damaged Goods, and we all fell in love. Above all else, this album has a sort of not nostalgia, nostalgia feeling that makes you realize that Knock Loose never forgot their roots and more than likely never will forget their roots. That's a good worry to stow away because a lot of bands, they'll have those first couple EPs, they'll have their first two albums, and then it's an immediate switch. Look at Grayscale, they put out Adornment, pure pop punk greatness. 
Then they put out Nella Vita, which was more of a half pop punk, half pop rock, and then their most recent album, Umbra, straight up pop rock. A lot of fans of bands in the scene, especially in the metal scene, when a band starts off super heavy, in your face, dragging you into the pit, bands immediately have that worry of, oh god, they're gonna pull over into the horizon. Oh god, they're just gonna lose all sense of who they are. They're gonna turn into an electronic or metal core band. Knock Loose hasn't lost their steps. It's a rare situation when you see a band in any genre, the artist, band, whatever, go, to, go and inject some new elements into an album while retaining their core sound, and then flip back to their core sound as is. It's usually one or the other, their core sound, new elements, or a completely new genre shift. Knock Loose does something insane with their discography here. Laugh Tracks, it's core. Different Shade of Blue, new elements, but still core. A Tear in the Fabric of Life, Ah, this release doubles back on the Knock Loose formula, adds some flips and tricks to it, and shows that it's always been great. Just like the Lorna Shore review I put up very recently, this is another case that EPs are nothing to scoff at, they're nothing to skip, and they're just as on par with albums as any album is. And that is why A Tear in the Fabric of Life by Knock Loose is getting an EP score 4.1 out of 5 and an overall album score of 8.2 out of 10. I do the out of five scores for EPs to give them their own identity against other EPs and also a full album score because I count the EPs in the final end of the year list. And that's it. That's the review. Let me know what you guys thought down in the comments below. If I missed something, if, I, if you felt like I didn't explore something good enough, I talked too much about some one thing or another, let's discuss the album or just how your day is going down in the comments. And above all else, have a great day. Stay hydrated. I'll see you next time.